Okay, so far I've talked about input, which means listening and reading. So now let me talk about practicing output, uh, which is writing, speaking, and translation. So let me first talk about uh, speaking. So a lot of people ask me, how is it possible to practice speaking English when you don't have access to a lot of English native speakers around you all the time? And you might not have any friends who are native speakers of English. How is it possible to practice English? So there are two ways, basically. The first is that you can practice speaking English on your own, first of all. Um, you don't necessarily need to have native speakers around you all the time in order to start speaking. And secondly, you can find people on the internet to practice with. So let me talk about the first one first. So I have a specific method of learning to practice speaking in a foreign language and learning to think in the foreign language. So it's very important to start actually practicing the language and training your brain to think in that language because it's not enough just to read English and understand. You may have a whole page of text and you think that you understand everything completely because you know all of the words. But then when you go to try and say something in English about this, are you able to say it? Just because you know the words in your mind and you can recognize them doesn't necessarily mean that you're able to produce this language yourself. So speaking is something that we have to practice. An analogy that I often use is uh, the one of practicing to drive. So, obviously you can listen to people talking about driving and you can read about driving and you think you understand all the theory and you understand everything about how to do it. But once you actually get in a car behind the steering wheel, then you find it's completely different. You have to learn and you have to get used to it and you have to practice over a long period of time. Speaking a language is the same thing. You have to get your mind used to the mechanics of thinking in the language and from translating it from your language into the foreign language and um, also you have to get your mouth around the mechanics of the pronunciation of that language you may think that you can uh, listen and you can understand very clearly but when you have to make these sounds yourself it's something very different so that's why we need to do a lot of active practice in speaking so this is my method for learning to speak and think in a foreign language on your own first. So what I do is I find a book that has texts in both the language you're trying to learn and your native language. So in this case it would be texts in English and Chinese, bilingual texts. And then also with a CD or MP3s of all the audio of the English text in the book. So it's not that difficult to find books like that like this in China. A lot of books have translations of all the English texts and mp3s. So you should be able to find a lot of books like this in any bookstore or even online. So what I do is I cover up the text. I choose one text at a time and I cover up the text in the foreign language and I look at the translation in Chinese. Okay, so I look at this Chinese translation and then what you would do is to try to translate each, each sentence from the Chinese into the foreign language, i.e. English, one sentence at a time. And then, so you look at the English and then you try to translate into Chinese and you must speak out loud. It's very important to not just talk in your head or talk to yourself quietly, but to speak out loud so you're pr practicing the pronunciation. And then what this does is this trains your brain to translate um, from Chinese into English and to think in English and then what you do is you say one sentence and then you listen to the sentence on the mp3 and you compare to see if you are right or not. It's very important to say something, don't just listen to the mp3 but try yourself first and then listen and then compare. What did you get wrong? Were you able to say it? If you didn't even know how to say it, just take a guess. Just say anything and then um, by doing this you will make mistakes continuously and then you will compare and then you will learn from your mistakes every time. So learning works much quicker if you are able to make more mistakes and learn from them. So that's why this method works. It seems like very hard work because it's much easier just to listen to an mp3 or just to listen to a, um, a CD or read a book. but by actually practicing in this way yourself, uh, you learn to train your brain much quicker. And then by doing this for a few months, you'll really start to think in English much more easily. 
So if you can't find texts which have both an English version and a Chinese version, then what you can do is you can take a text in English and then, um, for example, a short article, and you can translate that into Chinese and then try to do it as literally as you can, word by word. Even if the Chinese looks weird uh, or looks more like English, uh, it doesn't matter. Just translate it into Chinese. And then you look at the Chinese which you translated and then try to translate back into English, sentence by sentence. So this will really train your brain to switch between the two languages. And then again, you must speak out loud or write it down if you're practicing translation. And then compare your version with the original translation that you made and analyze the differences between the two. So if you haven't got text in both languages, you can do a translation yourself to produce that text.